Welcome to Excel in Business Math, video number 45. Hey, in this video, we got to see how to calculate the future value, the present value, and something new, the PMT, or the periodic payment for annuities. Now, the last few videos, we did calculate future value and present value, but it was for a lump sum. And once we learn the formulas and the Excel functions for annuities, it opens up all sorts of amazing possibilities. We can answer financial questions like these. What is my savings plan worth? How much to pay for a machine that will last eight years? How much can I withdraw each month in retirement? How much to deposit each month to become a millionaire? Or how much is my home mortgage loan? Now, an annuity, what does that mean? It's pretty simple. Notice this diagram here. It looks like we're saving $4,000 at the end of each year. And why is it an annuity? Because the amount of money each period is the same, and the time period between each period is the same. Once we have cash flow patterns like this, we have amazing formulas like this that look complicated, but because they can answer such useful financial questions like all of these, it's not really complicated. It's amazing and beautiful. Now, we will learn the math in this video, but we'll also see that behind the scenes, the PV, FV, and PMT functions are all programmed to do the heavy lifting math for us. Now, as we look through this list here, savings plan, retirement plan, home mortgage loan, these are all typical consumer financial products. And all of these usually fit the pattern of an annuity. Now, again, this formula looks complicated. But the beauty of an annuity is we have one single formula that calculates future value, present value, and PMT. Now, before we look at our math formulas and functions for annuities, we actually want to look at one or two examples of cash flow financial calculations that are not annuities. And we're actually going to start off by going and looking at our PDF notes. Now, the PDF notes and the Excel workbook can be downloaded in the link below the video. We want to go to page two. And we want to talk about calculating future value of cash flows. In our first example, we're going to have a savings plan with irregular cash flows, not annuity periodic cash flows. And what that means is we need to calculate how much our savings account will be worth in the future if we deposit 10000 in year 0, 20000 in year 3, and 15000 in year 6. What would be the worth of these cash flows in the future? Because they're not periodic cash flows, we actually have to take each individual lump sum present value amount, calculate the future value, and then add. If we go to the next page, here's a picture. Here's our cash flows times 0 to 6. And here's a picture. Notice each one of these amount is a present value amount. And at time 0, we have to take that 10,000. But when we make the future value calculation right here, we actually have to do it for eight periods. So that $10,000 at our assumed 6% period rate grows to $15,938.48. So when we have irregular cash flows, we're going to take each individual amount, do our future value lump sum calculation, get the list of all of the future value cash flows at time 8, and then add them up. And remember, when we're doing future value calculations, we're adding all the interest. All right, now we need to go over to Excel and see how to make these calculations in Excel. We're on the sheet EX1. And our goal is to calculate future value of a savings plan with irregular cash flows. You will deposit cash flows listed below right here into your savings account that pays 6% compounded yearly. What is the future value after eight years? Now, I listed all the variables. There's the APR, 6%. 
Number of compounding periods per year, 1. Number of years, 8. Now we're going to have to calculate our period rate. And even though it's 1, we're going to make this calculation. Hey, there's the annual rate divided by the number of compounding periods and enter. So that's our period rate. Now here's all of the years. Here's the date. So at the end of each year, we're putting in a certain amount, 10, 20, and then 15. Now if you have irregular cash flows, what we're going to have to do is calculate the future value. This 10,000 will be sitting in the savings account for eight years. This will be sitting in for five years, and this will be sitting in for two years. That means before we can calculate the individual future values of each and then add, we have to calculate the total number of periods. And I want a formula here and here that will automatically change if I throw a new number right there. So total number of periods. Well, here I need 8, 7, 6, and so on. So I'm going to say equals, well, there's the total. And lock it with the F4 key, minus years three cells to the left as a relative cell reference. Control Enter, double click and send it down. Go to the last cell and hit F2. Looking good. Now we can make our future value calculation. I need to calculate future value for each individual number. So I come over and use the future value function. The rate, that's this period rate up here. And I'm going to use the F4 key, comma, NPER. Well, it changes as we copy our formula down. So I'm clicking on that relative cell reference, comma. We do not use PMT because that's only for annuities with periodic payments, comma. We're doing an individual lump sum calculation. And since that's the amount we're depositing, from our point of view, it's a negative cash flow. So minus and click on that relative cell reference. We do not need type at all, close parentheses. Control Enter, double click and send it down. And notice it works fine for the cells where there's nothing. Well, the future value of 0 is, of course, 0. And the beauty of this solution is if I change this and I put 10,000 here, instantly that updates. Control Z. Now I need to come to the bottom and F2, verifying that the cell references are looking good. They are. Enter, Enter, Alt equals to get the sum function. And I'm going to highlight those cash flows and Enter. And there it is. There is the future value of these lump sum amounts deposited into our bank account. These present value lump sum amounts, 1, 2, 3, add up to 59,556. Now, each one of these, that one number, that's the future value in year 8 of this $20,000. Now, we can check with our FV function and actually off to the side. There's the PDF notes for function and math formula for our lump sum future value calculation from the last video. We're going to check. There's our present value times, in parentheses, 1 plus our period rate. And I'm going to lock it with the F4 key. Close parentheses, caret, because the exponent is going to be different each time. This amount will get eight years. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. I'm going to copy this over. Come to the last cell, hit F2. Cell reference is looking good. So we have checked and verified with our math formula. All right, so this is our first example. And if we don't have periodic cash flows, our cash flows are for different amounts, and the time between each is different, then we can use individual lump sum calculations. Now we want to go back over to our PDF notes. And for our example two, now we need to see how to calculate the present value of cash flows. And here's something that probably none of us have thought of before. How much to pay for a machine that a business is going to use with irregular cash flows? So our goal here is we're about to buy a machine. And we did our homework. We estimated that the machine will deliver $50,000 cash flow at the end of the first year. But then it's not going to deliver the same amount each year. 
It's not until the third year that it gives us another 25,000. Year five, it gives us 50,000. And in the final year, year eight, it gives us 10,000. So if we know that these are the cash flows, this is actually a net cash flow. So this would be the net positive cash flow that the machine is yielding for the business. The question is, how much do we pay? Well, if we knew what the interest is that the business expects to earn, we could calculate the present value of each one of these back to time zero at them, and that would be the maximum amount that we want to pay for that machine. Now, if we come down to page 6 in these PDF notes, time 1 to 8, those are the cash flows that the machine is going to generate. And here's our timeline from year 8 all the way back to 0. And our goal is to calculate the total present value. Well, each one of the future value amounts has to be used in our present value calculation. So for each amount, this $10,000 cash flow at year 8, we have to take out all of the interest for that one ten thousand and get back to that cash flow's present value. Now, in a problem like this, the business is going to have a very high interest rate. Now, it's not really called an interest rate. This would be a rate of return for the company's investment. So for each future value amount, individually, we have to make our present value calculation. Once we do all of those, we have a list at time 0, and we can add. And that's the maximum amount that we would want to pay for that machine. Now let's go over to Excel and see how to do this. Now we're on the sheet EX2. And our goal on this sheet is to calculate the present value of irregular cash flows. And this type of problem is called an asset valuation calculation. Now an asset is defined as anything a business owns or controls that will provide future benefit. That is the general term to describe things like a machine, trucks, buildings, and so on. So we're trying to value an asset, and our asset is a machine. Here's the description of what we're trying to do. How much should you pay for a machine for your business if it is estimated that it will generate the cash flows listed below? And there they are. Your business requires that the machine helps the business earn a 17% return. And you can think of this like interest or an investment return. Remember, a business is operating to make a return similar to you putting money in a bank account and trying to get an interest return. Now, here's our variable. 17% is our APR, our annual rate, number of compounding periods per year, and years. Our period rate at every single time even if the number of periods for compounding per year is 1, every time we're going to make this calculation divided by 1. That way, when you get to more complicated calculations, you're already used to always calculating period rate. All right, enter. And of course, we get the same thing because anything divided by 1 is 1. Now, for each cash flow, here's a $50,000 cash flow. Notice we're getting it in year one. Our goal is to calculate the present value and bring it back to time zero. Remember, on our diagram we saw just a second ago, that's 10,000 bucks we're getting in year eight. So we actually have to calculate the present value of that $10,000 all the way back to time zero. So this column will be filled with present values of these cash flows at time zero. Then we'll add. And that total will be the maximum amount we should pay for that machine. All right, so you ready? In our math calculation that we learned last video for present value of a lump sum, there's the PDF from last video. All right, so we're going to use equals PV function and tab. The rate, it's always the period rate. I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it, comma, NPER. Well, that's simply years for us. Every one of these cash flows, year one all the way to eight, we just use number of years. That's the total number of compounding periods for that particular cash flow, comma. We do not have 
annuity periodic payments. So we skip this comma. We have future values, and those values are positive. If that's a cash flow that's positive, the present value function will be polite and deliver the answer as a negative because it means we must expend that cash flow at time 0 to earn this at time 1. We do not need type, close parentheses, control enter, double click and send it down. I'm going to copy it up 2 to time 0 just to be consistent. Now I go to the last cell and hit F2. I'm verifying that the cell references are correct. Now look at that. Time 0, that $50,000 is worth 42,735 and 4 pennies. Remember, it's worth that much because we took out all of the 17% interest rate that we're expecting to earn. That's why when we get down to year 8, 10,000 bucks at time 0, we're willing to pay 2,847 and 82 pennies so that we earn a 17% return. Now, Total present value at time 0, Alt equals, that's our keyboard for the sum function. I redirect and hit Enter, and that's the maximum amount we should pay for this machine. That means if we paid exactly that amount, we would earn our 17% return. Now, if the machine has a price tag of 72500 would you buy it? Absolutely yes, because 72500 remember, that's the max amount we're willing to pay. So of course, if the machine costs less, we're going to buy it. On the other hand, if the machine costs $85,500, we are not going to buy it, because that's our maximum amount, and that's more than it. Now, if we buy the machine for $72,500, because it's less than our present value at 17%, that means that we would earn a higher rate. Similarly, if we bought it at 85,500, we would have a return less than 17%. Now, calculating the exact return on these particular cash flows, that's something we don't get to do in this class, but I do have a playlist of financial videos for a class I teach at Highline, 110 videos all about finance even in more detail than this class. The link is below in the description if you want to check that out. Now I'm going to definitely check to make sure that this calculation was correct, and we're going to do our present value calculation. We take future value as a relative cell reference divided by, in parentheses, 1 plus our period rate, and lock it with the F4 key close parentheses caret, and there's our number of periods. Control Enter, double click and send it down, and I'm going to copy it up. I should have just started it here each time, but I like to start where we have a concrete example of 50,000. Now I go to the last cell and hit F2. I'm verifying that all of the cell references are working. Alt equals, redirect and Enter, and we have verified. Now there's another way we can verify, too, because if, in fact, that's the present value that we deposit or expend to get this future value of 50,000 at exactly 17%, if we do our future value calculation, we'll use the future value function at a period rate of 17%, F4 to lock it, comma, number of periods relative cell reference, comma, comma, and there's our negative present value. If I do this calculation, I better get exactly that 50,000. And sure enough, I do. And I'm going to copy it down, copy it up. Be sure to go to the last cell and hit F2. Sure enough, we verified yet another way that our calculations are correct. All right, so we had our first two examples. And in these first two examples, we had non periodic cash flows. Now we want to go over to the sheet annuity and define what an annuity is, and then look at five examples of annuities. Now the definition of an annuity. An annuity is a financial debt or investment vehicle that contains periodic cash flows that meet this definition. One, 
equal amount of cash flow each period. Two, time between each cash flow is equal. Now, there's actually two types of annuities, end annuities and begin annuities. Now, an end annuity is defined as cash flow that occurs at the end of each period, also called ordinary annuities. Begin annuities, as you might have guessed, cash flows that occur at the beginning of each period, also called due annuities. Now, in this class, we'll only look at end annuities. And the lucky thing is, most consumer financial products are end annuities. And think about withdrawals from your check into some savings plan. You don't have it withdrawn right when you sign up. It's at the end of the first period, either a week or biweekly or monthly. Also, consumer loans for your house and your car, those payments are not taken out when you get the loan. They're taken out at the end of the first period and then subsequent periods. Now, here's our five financial annuity examples we're going to do. And I actually have a picture of the cash flow patterns for each one of these. This is a savings plan where we deposit a certain amount at the end of each year. Now, notice 4,000, 4,000. So the amount of the periodic payment is exactly the same each time. And the time between each payment is a year. So that meets the definition of an annuity. Now, notice we know what the periodic payment is and we need to calculate future value. Our next example, here's a picture of our asset valuation annuity cash flow. And here it is. At time zero, we need to know the maximum amount we should pay for a particular asset. And we've estimated cash flows at the end of each year of $10,000. Same amount, same time period between each cash flow. This meets the definition of an annuity. Notice we know the amount of the positive future cash flow, and we're trying to calculate present value. Next example, here's a cash flow pattern for a retirement where we know how much we have on the day we retire, and we need to calculate the amount that we can withdraw each month. It meets the definition because the amount is going to be the same each period. The time between each payment is the same. So we're trying to calculate the periodic payment given some present value amount. Next example, we all want to be a millionaire when we retire. But the question is, how much money do we deposit at the end of each period? Now, actually, right there, that's better. The question marks are coming at the end of each period. So how much to withdraw? That's our periodic payment we're going to calculate. And we know the future value. Our last example, here we borrowed $500,000 for our house, and we need to determine how much we're required to pay at the end of each month. It meets the definition. The amount is exactly the same. The time between each payment is the same. All right, we're going to go to example three on sheet EX3. And our first example is our savings plan, $4,000 at the end of each year and we need to determine future value. So our goal, at the end of each year, you plan to deposit 4,000 bucks into a savings plan that pays 5% compounded yearly. What is the future value of this savings plan in 18 years? Now here's a picture of our PDF notes, both the math formula and the Excel formula. There's also a picture down here because we're going to have to put all the parentheses in the right place when we're doing our math formula. Ah, but did we even ask the right question first? Does this meet the requirements of an annuity? Yes, it does in both cases. Same amount, same time between each amount. Annual rate is 5%. N is 1, 18 years. And there's our PMT, periodic cash flow or periodic payment. Now, if we're depositing this, it's very important we know the direction of the cash flow for our Excel function. So it's definitely negative. We don't have a present value for this problem, but you absolutely could. Now, if we were doing it with math, we'd have to do two separate formulas. But the actual future value function has an argument for that. So we're not going to do that one here, but you could. You could simply put a negative amount there, and future value function for Excel would work perfectly. The period rate, I'm going to take the annual rate divided by 
number of compounding periods per year. Total number of compounding periods, there's 18 years times one compounding period each year. And here it is, the drum roll, the first time we've seen future value function. Well, actually, it's not the first time. It's just the first time we're using it for an annuity. Now, we're already familiar with this. So the rate, that's the period rate, comma, NPER. That's the total number of compounding periods, comma. And here's the first time we've used PMT. It's got to meet the definition of periodic payment, and it does. Before we click on it, we have to enter a minus, because that's a cash flow coming out of our wallet. Comma. If you had some amount in this account right now at time 0, you'd put a negative and then click on present value cell. But we don't. Comma. Now we finally get to use this type argument. Or at least we have to be aware of this fifth argument in all of our financial functions. Notice it's easy. It's got a prompt. 0 is for end of the period, our end annuity. 1. That means begin annuity. Now, here's the cool thing. Since most consumer financial products are end annuities, the default for the type argument is end annuity. So you get to do one of two things if it's an end annuity. You either put a 0 there, which I never do, because guess what? If you leave type argument completely not in the function, meaning backspace, then it will assume that you want an end annuity. Now, we don't have a present value, so I'm also going to backspace on that. By the way, you always have a hint in your screen tips. If the argument has a square bracket around it, it means if you know the default and you want the default, you just leave it out. The default for present value, of course, is 0, and the default for type is end annuity. So that's all we have to do, close parentheses. You've got to be kidding me. That seems so simple for the complicated math it's going to do. So when I hit Enter, there's the future value amount. Now I'm going to use this in subsequent formulas. We are definitely required to round this amount. So I'm going to, right after the equal sign, use our round. Come to the end, we're rounding to the penny, so comma 2. Close parentheses and Enter. There it is. There's our future value. But the question is, how much do we deposit in total? If we knew that amount, we could subtract these two and figure out the total interest. Well, that's easy enough. How much do we put in? Equal sign, well, I put 4,000 bucks in. How many times? Times our total number of periods. When I hit Enter, 72,000. Now, total interest, I simply take equals. There's how much is in the account at the end, minus the total amount we put in, and Enter. I love it, $40,529.54. That's a lot of interest. Now I want to do the math formula to check this amount right here. Here's our math formula. Equal sign, and I need to get our payment. There's the 4000 bucks times open parentheses. Now we're going to have to do another open parentheses because I need to force 1 plus the period rate, close parentheses, to happen before we do our exponent, total number of compounding periods. Now we have to subtract 1 from that and then do close parentheses. So all of that has to be calculated. Multiplying the PMT times the numerator of, in essence, our fraction, divide by, and in the denominator, we have our period rate. Now, that formula right here, that's this famous annuity formula to calculate future value given some payment amount and the rest of our variables. When I hit Enter over here, we have checked. Now, we use this function right here, future value. That is just beautiful, and it's definitely what we want to use when we have an annuity. But I want to also show you just this first time that if we took this 4,000 and listed it and did the same calculation as we did for our lump sum amount, that would give us the same amount. Because if we did take each individual amount 
calculate the future value, and added them, it'd give me exactly the same as our calculations over here. Now, we're going to have to be careful here, because if you look at that 4,000 for the annuity, it's at the end of the first period. If we're taking this from time 0 and jumping it into the future, it's not 18. It's actually 17. So right inside our formula, for each one of the number of compounding periods, we're going to take the full amount minus the particular year that that cash flow sits at. So you ready? We're going to use the future value function. Our period rate, that's this 5%, F4, comma, total number of periods. This is where we have to be careful. I'm going to take total number of compounding periods with an F4 to lock it minus the number of compounding periods in this table. So right in NPER, we make our calculation for total number of periods. Comma. We do not have a PMT. This isn't an annuity. Each one of these 4,000s is going to be treated as a present value lump sum. So comma to skip it. Present value, it's already listed as negative there. That is perfect. We do not need type. This is not an annuity. Lump sum deposited at year one. The future value is 9,168 and seven pennies. Double click and send it down. I'm going to copy it up one. Down here, F2. And that makes perfect sense because if we deposit this at the end of year 18 and we immediately want to know the value of it, well, of course it's 4,000. All right, so you ready? Alt equals this whole set of calculations here. When I add them and hit Enter, I get exactly the same amount as the future value function for an annuity or our math formula for an annuity. All right, so this is a savings plan. We like seeing what $4,000 invested at the end of each year is worth in 18 years. So here we took cash flows known, the periodic payment, and we calculated the future value. Now let's go to example four. And in this example, we'll know future cash flows. And we need to calculate the present value. Now this is our asset valuation problem. And we've estimated that the cash flows from this machine or this asset we'd like to buy are going to be $10,000 at the end of each year. So we have our positive future cash flows. It meets the definition of an annuity. And we need to calculate present value. More specifically, we need to ask the question, how much should we pay for a machine for your business if it is estimated that it will generate $10,000 in cash flows at the end of each year for 10 years? Your business requires that the machine helps the business earn a 17% return. What's the maximum that we should pay for this machine? Now, yes, the cash flows are exactly the same each period, and the time between each cash flow is the same. There's our annual rate, but really this is called in an asset valuation problem the required return. It's also referred to as a discount rate since we're taking future cash flows and calculating the present value of all those cash flows. Number of compounding periods per year. Number of years, there's our periodic cash flow, our PMT. It's definitely going to be positive. We're not going to calculate the future value. We're going to calculate present value. Now our period rate, there it is, 17% divided by number of compounding periods, and Enter. Total number of compounding periods, 10 times number of compounding periods per year. All right, so the present value. Here's our Excel function over here, and here's our math formula. And notice it's slightly different. We have to say 1 minus. 1 plus the period rate. And look at that. The exponent is a negative number. Then we divide the whole thing by the period rate and multiply it by our PMT. Now let's calculate using equals PV tab period rate. There it is, comma, total number of compounding periods, comma. And there it is, PMT. And it is definitely positive. Since all of the cash flows are positive, the result from present value will be negative. That means the most that we should expend to pay for this asset. We do not have any future value amount, lump sum. And since this is an end annuity, we just leave that off 
and the PV function will assume we want end annuity. Close parentheses and enter. And there it is. That's the maximum amount we should pay for future cash flows at the end of each year. Now, the question is, if that's the maximum amount we should pay, if the machine or the asset costs 45500 should we buy it? Absolutely, yes. This is the max we should pay. That's under, so we will buy it. 52500 no way we're not going to buy it. Now, we're definitely going to check the present value using this formula right here. Equals, and there's our payment, times open parentheses. And now inside the parentheses, I need to isolate yet another calculation, 1 plus our period rate. Close parentheses, caret. And now we need a negative exponent, minus, in front of that number, number of total compounding periods. Now we have our negative exponent, and we must subtract 1. Finally, close parentheses. Everything inside the parentheses there that's the numerator. So we divide by the period rate. And now there's our math formula. When I hit Enter, we get exactly the same number. Now it's just displaying different decimals, but those are the same. Now for this one, we could also follow what we did in example three and calculate the present value of each future value amount. Now, we wouldn't want to do this, but we're just learning this for the first time. So it's always helpful to do it a few different ways. The goal of this column is to take these future amounts at each one of these time periods and calculate present value at time 0. So I'm going to use equals present value, the rate. There's our period rate, F4, comma, NPER. Since this is year one and I'm trying to get back to year zero, I simply use the number of periods, in our case years, as a relative cell reference, comma. We're not doing a payment annuity problem here. This is a lump sum calculation, so comma to skip it. Future value, it's definitely positive. We don't need type at all. Close parentheses, Control Enter. Comes out negative as it should. Double click and send it down. Drag it up. Go to the last cell and hit F2 to verify that the cell references are working. Enter, Enter, Alt equals. Highlight those numbers. And when I hit Enter, I get exactly the same number as our PV for an annuity function, our math formula for annuity, or the long method. All right, so example three and four, we calculated present value. And in our last example, future value, where we knew the PMT amount. Now let's go to example five, and we want to solve for the PMT amount. Now here's our retirement plan. We have $650,000, and we simply want to put it in the bank, and then for the next 30 years, just withdraw the same amount each month. It definitely meets all the requirements of an annuity. We've listed our variables, and I am not going to put this here. This is actually going to be an annual rate since we're putting it in some investment vehicle. And the contract says we can get 3.75. Number of compounding periods per year. There's number of years. That's the present value. It's definitely going to be negative because we're going to put it in the bank. We're not calculating future value. We're going to calculate the PMT for a present value amount. Now, our period rate, we take annual rate and divide it by number of compounding periods per year. So when I hit Enter, a very small amount per month. Total number of compounding periods, 30 years times 12 months in each year, we get 360. Now with these inputs, we can use for the first time the equals PMT function tab. Look at that. The arguments look the same as future value and present value. The rate always means the period rate. And there it is, period rate comma, total number of periods, there it is, comma. We definitely have a present value amount. And it's definitely negative, so I'm putting a minus, clicking on the 650,000. Now, we don't have a future value amount, but we could put a future value amount if on the final day, 360th month, we wanted a lump sum amount there. We could put something there, but we don't, and this is an end annuity, so we don't even have to put type in. 
close parentheses. That simple formula when I hit Enter tells us, wow, we get to withdraw $3,010.25. Now let's check with our math formula here. Equal sign, and I'm going to take the present value amount, and I'm going to divide it by. And again, we need to be careful with our parentheses. Open parentheses, open parentheses. We need to be careful, have those two there. And look at this, we're going to take 1 minus the period rate raised to the negative exponent. 1 minus, in parentheses, 1 plus our period rate, close parentheses. There's our exponent minus, because this is a negative 360. Now we have to close parentheses. So that whole little bit right there is going to be the numerator divided by the period rate. And then we need to close parentheses, because we need to do everything in the denominator before the numerator can do the straight division. When I hit Enter, there's exactly the same amount. Now actually, I'm going to drag this off to the side just for the moment. And guess what? We want to calculate total amount withdrawn. I'm going to move the column up here. And how do we calculate that? Well, wait a second. That's how much we withdrew each period times our total number of periods. That means we withdrew 3,025. 360 times. Now I'm going to hit Enter. Now we should probably have rounded this. Let's go ahead and round, because we used it in a subsequent calculation. We definitely run the risk of extraneous decimals, and this is money. When I hit Enter, yes, we get a significantly different number. So that was important, because that is an amount that was paid out. Now we can calculate total interest, tab, tab, and that is Hey, all of the amount we withdrew minus the original 650,000 and enter. Wow, 433,690 dollars. All right, in this example, we knew the present value, and we wanted to calculate how much we get to withdraw each month. Let's go to example six. And this is where we want some future value amount, and we need to figure out how much to deposit at the end of each month. How much do we need to deposit at the end of each month to become a millionaire? And we will assume we can invest in stocks, index funds, and other things since it's such a long time period. And we probably will be able to, even if we're investing conservatively over a long period of time, get 10%. So there's the annual rate. There's the compounding periods per year, years. There's our future value. It's definitely going to be positive because we want to withdraw it. Our period rate, there's 10% divided by number of months in a year. Equals 30 years times 12 months. Enter. Now we can use our PMT, but we have future value, not present value. Equals PMT. The rate, that's the period rate, comma. Total number of periods, comma. We don't have a present value, so we skip it by typing a comma. Future value, we definitely have that. It's a million bucks. The annuity type is end, and PMT will assume if we leave type out that it is end, so we're not putting it in. Close parentheses and Enter. Wow, so I have to put $442.38 in each month. Now I'm definitely going to round this to the penny, comma, to close parentheses, and Enter. Now I want to do our math formula. And here is the math formula right here. It's also over here. All right, you ready? Equals, there's the future value amount. And we're going to divide it by 1, 2, 3 different parentheses. Now our first inside calculation is 1 plus the period rate close parentheses. And this is future value, so we don't have a negative exponent. Carrot raised to the total number of periods. Now I need to subtract 1 and close parentheses. So this orange right here, that's the numerator before we divide by our period rate, close parentheses. Now everything inside 
the black parentheses, the denominator for future value amount. And when I hit Enter, I get exactly the same thing. Now let's do the same calculation here as we just did in our last example. I want total amount deposited equals there's the rounded amount times the total number of periods. So 360 times I deposited that amount. Now I want total interest. And since that is a negative, by the way, that's the currency number formatting that I hardly ever use that I happen to have in some of these cells. But that means negative. So equals will take the future value, and we will add a negative. And that is going to be a lot of interest. That is the power of compound interest over long total number of periods and 30 years. That's a long time. But if you are diligent and put that much away, that's a lot of interest. Now we have our last example. We're going to go over to example 7. And here's our cash flow diagram. We know that we borrowed 500,000 from the bank, and we need to calculate our periodic payment. It definitely fits the pattern of an annuity, same amount each period, same time between each amount. The rate that we were quoted for our home loan was 4.25%. Monthly, number of years, there's the amount we borrowed, and it's definitely positive. Doesn't matter if we give it to the person that we bought the house from. That amount is between us and the bank, and the bank gave it to us as a positive. Remember that wallet purse trick is the trick we always do to figure out the direction of the cash flow. We're not calculating future value, but we definitely need our period rate, 4.25% divided by 12. Total number of periods, years times 12. I can do this one in my head, 360, I think, and Enter. All right, now we can use PMT to calculate a home loan or car loan payment. This is called an amortized loan. Any kind of consumer loan almost always fits this pattern, an end annuity, equals PMT tab. The rate, that's the period rate, comma, NPER, total number of periods, comma, present value, you betcha, and it's positive to us. We don't have a future value. But guess what? If you've ever heard of a balloon payment, that's the amount that you pay after all the periods are over. If you put a full negative amount there, that means coming out of your pocket to the bank, you'd put it there. We don't have a balloon payment, and this is an end annuity, so I don't put either one of those in. Close parentheses and Enter. There it is, $2,459.70. Each month we have to pay that on this home loan. Now here's our math formula. We actually already did this one time. Equals, there's the present value divided by, open parentheses, open parentheses, 1 minus, open parentheses, 1 plus our period rate, close parentheses, caret, negative exponent, so I type a minus. There's the total number of periods, close parentheses. So all of that is going to be our numerator. Then we divide it by our period rate, close parentheses. So all of this will be the new denominator for the present value amount. When I hit Enter, I get exactly the same number. Wow, that was seven amazing examples of calculating present value, future value, and PMT when there are cash flows. Now, when I scroll over to the side, there are lots of awesome homework practice problems for you to try. All right, so what do we do in this video? Example number seven, we saw how to calculate the monthly payment for a loan given some present value amount. Over example six, we knew we wanted to be a millionaire, so we calculated how much we need to deposit in the bank at the end of each month. We also calculated the total interest. Over on example five, this example is the one you do after we did example seven, because this is after you retire, right? Then once you know the amount, the future value amount, it then becomes the present value. And then you do your calculation to figure out how much you get to withdraw each month in retirement. Example four, 
we valued an asset, in our case a machine. We knew the future positive cash flows, and it fit the definition of an annuity, so we calculated the present value. Over on example three, we were saving up, knowing that we deposited $4,000 for 18 years, and we wanted to calculate the future value. Examples three to seven, those were all annuities, but it's also really important. Sometimes your cash flow patterns do not fit the definition of an annuity. So in this example, we had cash flows from an asset we were considering buying. So we had to do individual present value calculations and then add to get the present value of future irregular cash flows. Then example one, we started it off. We were saving cash amounts that did not fit the pattern of an annuity. So we had to calculate individual future amounts. And then we knew what the future value of our account was. Wow, that was an epic video. And guess what? This is the last video in our Excel business math class. So that was a fun 45 video adventure. Now, if you watched all the way to the end, be sure to subscribe to this channel because there's always lots more videos and lots more classes to come from Excel is Fun. And just on a side note, if you like the finance in this video, I have 110 videos, all part of a free finance class at YouTube. So be sure and click on the link for that playlist if you'd like. All right, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub. And guess what? We'll see you for other non-Excel business math videos in the future. See you next video.